The video you're about to see is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video is brought to you by a request from a fellow member of the community asking if there is a way to transfer files between Ubuntu on the Switch to another PC using FileZilla. So that's what we're going to be doing today. With that being said, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so the setup that we're going to do on this video here is actually pretty easy. We're just going to need to download and install two things, which is the FileZilla on Ubuntu and then an FTP server on the Windows PC. In this case, my example PC is a Windows 10 and that's pretty much it. We're going to be setting up everything in between and I'll have some test files that I'm going to be transferring from my PC to Ubuntu and possibly the other way around. So with that being said, let's go ahead and continue. All right. So starting off with the PC side of things, we're going to be downloading an application that has the ability to enable an FTP server. This application is called everything. So if you look in the description down below, there's going to be several links. One of them should say, download the windows, everything FTP server here. I don't know, something like that. But once you click on that link, it should take you to this page right here. And this is the download section for the application called everything. And we're going to be downloading this option here for the portable zip. Actually, it's going to be up to you. But the reason why I chose this application here is because it has a portable zip. Now, I don't like to really install things on my PC. So I like to use a portable option if it's there you could just open it up, run the application, and then once you close it out, it's not installed on your PC. So I like that option. It's up to you if you want to use the portable one. That's what I'm going to be using on this video. And once you click on the link, it'll start the download process. After that, you can have it moved to the desktop like I have done right here. Now, since it's a portable version, you're going to have to create a folder so that way it can have its own directory. And I'm just going to type here everything you can name it whatever you want but um, i'm going to be using 7-zip to extract the files from here if you want to follow along with me with 7-zip i'll also leave a download link in the description down below so with 7-zip i'm going to right click and then open the archive here has the files that we need to run everything and then extract them into the folder that we created that's pretty much it now when we have everything inside this folder, if we look at it, we can open up everything and it's going to give you this uh, message here saying that it needs to use um, administrative privileges to index the files inside your hard drive. So just leave it as run as administrator. And then just click yes or allow on those options that you get. And here we go. Now we have access to all the files that are inside my hard drive. But that's not why we're doing this here. We're going to be using the FTP option here in tools. And once you click on this, you're going to go to options here. And then you're going to want to go down to where it says FTP server. Here you have an option that says enable FTP server. Just go ahead and click on enable it. And what we need to do here is we're going to type in the username that we want to access when we go on to Ubuntu. So in this case, I'm just going to put uh, Windows. I'm typing like this because I have two keyboards here, one for Ubuntu and one for Windows. So I'm going to put in Windows and then you're going to create your own password when you're going to try and log in. So here's my password. I'm just going to do something simple and then click apply. Once it does that, it's going to ask you if you want to allow um, a firewall. That way it can access network. Of course, you're going to want to allow access so that way you can have it accessed with Ubuntu later on. So just allow access here on public networks. And then once that is done, you can just click OK. Now, the last thing that we can do on the PC is we need to know the IP address that we have on our PC. And in order to do that, we can go to a file explorer like, like so, 
here and then I'm going to click on this PC. Once we do that, we can go to this tab here or this URL section or something like that. And we can type in uh, CMD. Press enter. Once this opens up, we're going to want to type in IP config. Then press enter. And you see right here, this IP address, this is what we're going to want to keep in mind. Of course, mine is going to be different than yours, but you're going to want to just keep in mind this one. You can write it down or you could just minimize this and we're going to be using it later on. So with that, that's it. Now we have the FTP server running on our windows right now. We can look down here. It is running. And if we want to get out of it, we can just right click and exit. But we have the server running here. Now what we need to do is go on to Ubuntu on the switch and install FileZilla. So I'll see you when I get there. All right, so here we are on Ubuntu on the Nintendo Switch. And whenever you want to install something new, it's always good to start with a system update. So that's what we're gonna start with first. We're gonna to wanna to navigate to files and click on it. And here in files, you're gonna right click. We'll make sure you're on home tab and then right click here in the empty area and then open in terminal. Once you do that, you're going to want to type in this sudo apt update. Press enter. Then type in the password you used to create Ubuntu. And it's okay if you have everything up to date. This is what you need to do in order um, to install anything new. It's just a safer way of things, making sure everything is up to date. So mine says, that all packages are up to date. But if yours says that there is several um, items that need to be installed, you're gonna want to type in sudo apt upgrade. And then press enter. But of course, nothing's gonna update for me because I have everything already updated. So that's one thing to do first. And then after that, you can go ahead and then just to be on an extra safer side, we can go into the Megascript. If you have used the Megascript before and did an update, like if you saw my previous videos and we did the online updater from the Megascript, then you don't have to do this option. I'm only doing this just in case those of you that haven't done it yet. So it's not that much uh, big of a deal, but let's just go ahead and do it. So this is what I'm talking about in the Megascript. Once you open it up, you're going to want to have the scripts here. Just the only ones checked is the auto updater and then just go to install items. Type in the password you use to create Ubuntu. And press enter. So this part will most likely take a while, but if it has any questions for you, then you're going to want to type in yes for everything. So this is the first question I'm here. Do you want to get rid of any unused programs? If any, just click yes. And any other questions it might give you, even if it's on here, it might say it's going to install something. And it says, if you want to type Y and then press enter. Okay. So once the auto updater has finished, then it kicks you out. It tells you goodbye. Just exit the mega script. Now like I said, this is just a safer way of doing things because the Megascript installs and add things, takes away things that you may need, you may not need. So it's just good to make sure that those are updated as well. And now that we're done with the Megascript, we can go back into files, click on it, make sure you're in the home, and then right click and then open a terminal again. Here in the terminal, now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna type in sudo apt install Filezilla. Did I spell it right? Let me make sure. So sudo apt install Filezilla. And then press enter. Type in the password you use to create Ubuntu. And wait for any questions. It says after this operation, it's going to add the space. Do you want to continue? Type Y and then press enter. You may get some errors, but I think that's okay. Let's see. When I tried doing it for the first time, it didn't work for me, but 
I'm trying this for the third. It worked for me for the third, fourth, and fifth time just to make sure it works for y'all. But once we install FileZilla, we can just to be on the safe side again, we're going to go ahead and do a restart. So I'm going to click on power here on the top right. Oh, my head is in the way. Top right, shut down, and then restart. Okay, so after coming back from a fresh restart, we can check to see if FileZilla is installed on our Ubuntu device on our Switch by going up to the top left, clicking on the search your computer, and then typing the letter F. You should have FileZilla already installed right here, and you can either enter it already, or if you want to pin it to your taskbar for later use, you can hold click over it, and then drag it to the taskbar. That way, when you restart Ubuntu, it'll already be here for you, but that's up to you. So with FileZilla, you can go ahead and enter it, and you'll most likely have a welcome message here. Just click OK. And then all we need to do next is just reference these top options here to access our PC. So the host is going to be the IP configuration that I was talking about. The username, password, and port are from the configurations we did with the FTP server on the Everything application. So just a quick reference. I'm going to minimize this just to show you that here is the Everything application. The username for that i made was windows my password and then 21 and then my ip address is on the ip config that i showed earlier and it's going to be this here so just remember that i'm typing in my ip address you type in your ip address and your username and password so just let you know you you do those things that you created or else it's not going to work for you so with that being said on my host it's going to be my ip address you type in yours which is 192.0, I mean, dot 168.0.22. And then username and password for me, I created was Windows. Make sure it's spelled correctly. And then password is the password I created for this server. And then the port is 21. So if everything is done correctly, we can just go to Quick Connect. And I should have access to my C drive from my PC. So that's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and transfer anything. So here's my C drive. Here is my um, drive for my Ubuntu on my Switch. Right now it's on the home here on the right left. So it would be on the files option and in the home tab. So if I want to put anything inside here from my PC, I can go to, um, I have an example on my desktop. So if I go to users, my name, then desktop, I have a folder that's called files for transfer right here. I can just highlight, hold click, and then drag it to the left side, and it will transfer to my uh, Ubuntu uh, storage. So that's pretty much it. I would like for you to keep in mind, though, that this is a one-way ticket. So if you're, as the comment was said on my previous video, it was a FileZilla option, so that way you can transfer files from your PC. So that's the way I understood it. It's a one way ticket as in you can transfer files from your uh, PC to your Ubuntu, but you can't do it backwards. And I think that's because this is an FTP server. And I think in order to do that other option, you need an SFTP server or an SSH or SHH. I don't know what it's called, but I, I think it's because you cannot do it on an FTP server. So don't quote me on that. But if that's the case, then yeah, if you do, if, if I am correct, you can leave a comment that I am, or if you have a better answer, but this is just to transfer files from your PC to your Ubuntu device. Now, if you're interested on having maybe an option for both where you can transfer in and out, then you can leave a comment on that and I can uh, see if I can take the time for that option as well. But this is what the comment was, and I hope this is this is what he was talking about, and I hope that you like this. So that being said, everything is working for me just fine. My files transferred successfully. Keep in mind that this is going to be transferring through Wi-Fi, so it could take a really long time depending on how big your files are. So that be on you on what you want to do for that i forgot to say because i ended the video 
but my files did transfer successfully. And if I go into my files tab in the home and here in the home tab, I should have the files for transfer here. So everything did work out for me. Just wanted to show you because I wanted to show you and I forgot, but there you go. My files did transfer successfully and we should be good from there. So that being said, if everything is working for me. I hope everything is working for you. But of course, if it doesn't, let me know and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. And if it does work for you, if you want to go ahead and try it out, let me know if it's working for you as well. Maybe some uh, pointers on something that I could do differently. Maybe some tips on how I can do the, the other option where I can transfer from Ubuntu to PC instead of just PC to Ubuntu. So go ahead and let me know. Uh, I don't know a lot of this stuff, so I'm, I'm definitely happy to learn. <laughs> but other than that, everything seems to be working on my end. I hope everything's working for you. And thank you for everybody that support this channel, supports for me. I really appreciate it. So thank you for watching. I love you. And I'll see you on the next one.